it's not the first time mm -hmm. that the dual counter model has been offered in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. It was tried back in 2002 and not so successful. What is different this time and how are you going to get gauge the success? Yeah. Good morning, Emily. Great to be here. So uh, one of the key differences this time is the dual counter market maker program that we have established, which essentially allows for a group of dual counter market makers, and we have nine of them that have already signed up, to actually go and, and make sure that the prices and the differentials between both counters are constantly hedged and maintained without significant discrepancies. So this is a very significant change. There's a lot of excitement, obviously, from the issuer side, but, but also from this dual counter market maker, because we set up the program in a way that it's attractive for them. So, so it should encourage a lot of um, activity and making sure that the markets are really stabilized in both markets. There's a 24 stocks initially, yes. uh, but the Hong Kong stock universe consists of 2,600 companies. Right. How far along do you expect for more companies to join on? I, I, the, as you said at the beginning, this represents 40% of the average daily traded volume. We would expect that to, to continue expanding. And over time, I think a, a great majority of the stocks in our markets will be participating in this program. Is there any metrics that you're going to be using to gauge the success this time? No, we're, we're allowing the market to really play out and to make sure that the investors have more options for investments, more diversification. This, this program is aimed at, number one, making sure that we give more options to investors. Number two, that, that we, we continue helping on the internationalization of the RMB. And that by itself is number three, which solidifies our role in, a, in Hong Kong as a renminbi trading hub. Average daily turnover in Hong Kong is at a four-year low. Will this mm -hmm. serve to boost turnover? Um, I, I think it probably there will be some increase in turnover, but the most interesting thing is that you're tapping a liquidity pool that is in renminbi that will now be able to invest directly. There are a lot of renminbi deposits in Hong Kong today. And also, over time, as you well mentioned at the beginning, the key objective of this is to make sure that that southbound flow from the mainland that today invests through Stock Connect, today has to be done in Hong Kong dollars. That's very inconvenient for the mainland investors. The fact that they will be able to transact in an instant basis in renminbi, that's a huge difference. So that should allow a lot more of that flow from the mainland, especially the retail flow that will come into Hong Kong. One of the challenges of Hong Kong is only 7 million people, so it's very limited in terms of retail. But the mainland, 1.4 billion people, that's a lot. And a lot of that can come through Stock Connect and help the liquidity in our market. So when do you expect the Southbound Connect to be able to have this dual counter model? We're working very closely with the regulators and also with our counterparts and other stakeholders to make sure that all the the infrastructure, the, 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 the models, so everything is, is put in place. That will take a little bit of time, so we'll be making an announcement whenever we're ready to do that. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, the market has been a bit fragile, as you've said yourself, because of the ge geopolitical environment. Mm -hmm. uh, we're watching as uh, Anthony Blinken, U.S. Secretary of State, is uh, up in Beijing, watching this very closely. This has impacted Hong Kong's turnover, uh, the IPO market. How are, you, how are you seeing things now? Yes, uh, of course, all um, you know, the global macro environment, geopolitics, they affect our markets. And our markets are very international, very connected to the world. So we are affected by all the same trends that affect global markets. Now, uh, we're, I was very encouraged to see the positive tone after the conversations. And I look forward to making sure that um, we continue improving the relationships between East and West because that will foster activity in our markets. Listing reforms are underway. As of May, there were 35 IPOs in Hong Kong. Uh, Chapter 18C was introduced to attract specialist technology companies. We're already about halfway into 2023. How does the IPO pipeline look? Is it still as robust? Uh, the pipeline is, let's say, roughly between 90 and 100 issuers that have actually filed and are waiting for their you know, process to go forward. That is a, a bit lo slower than what we've had over the last few years. What, what we're seeing is also that the global international market is very, very soft. If you look at the number of issuances, Hong Kong is actually up year on year. And while internationally it's down quite a bit, globally it's down 60% in terms of amount raised. Hong Kong is almost flat, a little bit down perhaps versus last year. So deals are getting a little smaller with the pricing being um, a bit soft. 
what we're seeing is that uh, investors prefer to do a smaller offering. But, but we're hopeful with the new listing regimes, the, new, the introduction of the specialist technology reforms, that that will help the market gain some traction. Just a couple months ago, uh, Hong Kong X signed an MOU with the Saudi Tadawal Group. How soon can we expect a listing from a Saudi company in Hong Kong? <laughs> well, I mean, I was actually in Saudi last week, so I mean, it was it's it's very exciting. And this was my third trip in the last month, la last uh, nine months. So quite a bit of things, uh, you know, to 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 work together. What, what we're doing, and, and we actually had a visit from the uh, Tadawal people, they came to Hong Kong, we spent a lot of time together. What we're doing is to make sure that we, may, uh, that we uniform our regimes, we try to make it easier for companies you know, from here and investors from here to be transacting in their markets and the other way around as well. So hopefully this will allow a lot more of the sovereign wealth funds from the Middle East to make it easier for them to invest in our markets. Our investors will also you know, want to invest in, in those markets. And when will they have an, uh, a Saudi company? I don't know when that will happen. <laughs> I mean, uh, hopefully we have like m m joint uh, uh, listings very soon. You've been very busy traveling, of course, and tomorrow you're leaving for the United States, getting yes. ready to open your New York office officially. Yes. Yes. And a London office, of course, is already open and yeah. up and running. Talk to us a little bit about the diversification and your spreading of tentacles, expansion around the world. Yeah, part of what we want to do is to make sure that we're connecting with the world. And, 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 and within that also, it's being very close to our clients. We have to be close to the clients, especially after you know three years of COVID where communications actually broke down a little bit. Now it's very important that we're um, un understanding what clients want, what their needs are. So opening the office was very important to make sure that that we adjust our, our, our regimes, our trading patterns to exactly what the investors around the world need. So that's happening in the U.S. We're also doing that in Europe through our, through our London office. Are you going to be opening an office in Saudi as well? Well, I think, I think that the logical thing is for us to continue expanding. The Middle East, that's a very interesting market. As I mentioned, I've been there three times in the last nine months. So, so we will continue analyzing that, that, that possibility. And, and, and for sure, we want to continue going around the world. Hi, I'm Emily Tan, and thanks for watching CNBC. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks for watching.